when you have an alligator pond, what you really need to really maximize the benefit of that alligator pond is a gondola to go over the top of it. And we are going to try to install one here and we're going to try to minimize uh, the cost that it will take us or try to find the difference in cost it will it will be between putting in a stainless steel cable for that gondola versus a hemp rope for that gondola and that's what we're trying to do here. So let's first of all do the statics part of this problem. Uh, we know that we are going to have to suspend a 900 pound gondola over a span of 168 feet uh, and when it does that it's it's probably going to drop by 13 feet and so we can set up a free body diagram so uh, I'm gonna actually show the little gondola here the weight of that gondola as I just said is 900 pounds there will also be the tension in the two uh, pieces of cable that move away from where that uh, pulley is, is located that suspends the gondola and that's what we're trying to find is the tension uh, in that cable which there's going to be a tension pulling to the right and another tension pulling to the left let me go ahead and stick some coordinate axes on here we have y we have x okay so what we need to add now is information that tells us uh, something about the directionality of these two tensions and so I'm going to do that using a slope indicator. Okay, with my slope indicator, I know that it drops by 13, and over that 13 or for that 13 foot drop, that happens over a span to one side only of half of that 168, which would just be 84. And that would actually be the same as over here as well, 13 and 84 okay so once we have that we can figure out how much tension is in the cable uh, to do that uh, we go ahead and um, I've kind of assumed already that these both have the same tension in them technically that's something that we could prove from the free body diagram once we've proven that we can just take the y direction and that gives us enough information about finding T so let's go ahead and do summation of forces in the y direction okay for that I have minus 900 pounds plus 2 times T 2 because we have the same uh, y component that happens for each of these uh, two tension components but I don't want the entire tension component I just want the piece of it that points upward and to get that I basically take 13 over the square root of 13 squared plus 84 squared. Okay, and that accounts for all of the different forces that act on the gondola. Again, the number two I put right here, that's because there's two ropes, uh, and it's just a shorthand of getting at that T. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this information in here. Um, we can just put it in directly as minus 900 plus 2 times x uh, times 13 over the square root of 13 squared plus 84 squared. And when I solve for this, it tells me that I have a tension in my cable of 29,000 or 2942.3 pounds. Okay. So how does that help us? Well, uh, we we can uh, very simply now take this tension and figure out how many strands we would need in either case, either for the hemp rope or for the stainless rope or stainless cable. So uh, to get that, we basically just take our 29,042, 2942, I should say, 0.3 pounds, and we divide by however much this is total 
we divide by however much one strand can hold and that'll tell us how many strands so uh, let's see for hemp okay so this is strands of hemp we take that and we divide it by 600 Okay, 2942.3, that actually should be stored in X. So one way of doing this is I can just take X and divide it by 600. And that tells me I need about 4.9, of course I can't do uh, integer numbers, or excuse me, non-integer numbers. So where I say 4.9, we're gonna have to round that up to five strands of hemp, okay? Otherwise, we can do strands of stainless steel. To do that, I do 2,942.3 pounds, and I divide that instead by 1,200. Okay, so I take X and divide it by 1200. Okay, and that tells me I need 2.45 strands, uh, but again, that actually, I can't do that. I need to go up to the next largest number of strands to, be, to really be able to hold it. So three. Okay, so five in this case, three in this case. All right, so that gives us how many strands we're going to need. Uh, the next thing that we should probably do before we get too far into the process of figuring out the cost for these, uh, these different options is figure out how much length do we need because we actually don't know that necessarily off the top of our head. It's going to actually be 168 feet approximately, but since it drops some and we want these posts to remain vertical, uh, then we should probably figure out how much we really need. So. The length then of rope or cable is going to be equal to the square root of 13 feet squared plus 84 squared, 84 feet squared. Okay. And actually, to, to really make this work, I should probably multiply it by two because that basically takes into account uh, each end of that rope. But then it also says here that we need to have an extra um, 10 feet of uh, material so that we can properly make our connections. So we're going to add to this 10 feet. And so what we'll do is we'll do two times the square root of 13 squared uh, plus 84 squared plus 10. Okay, and that gives us how much rope or cable we need, 180 feet. All right, so now what we need to do is figure out some of these costs. Um, if we go with the hemp rope, then what we see there is that we will need one right at the beginning and then every year thereafter for a number of years. Let's do a little cash flow diagram of what that would cost. Okay, so in year one, there's going to be the cost of purchasing one of those ropes. In year two, there's also going to be that same cost and so on and so forth. Year three, year four, and I think it says we're planning on using it for six years. Okay, so we need one right at the beginning. And this, this whole thing goes till six. And where do we have these cash flows? Well, we have the cash flows happening uh, 
every year, but we don't need one at the very end, uh, assuming that we're going to quit using the gondola system at that time, which is kind of what is indicated in the problem. Okay, so we do need to figure out how much that costs. So we have a hundred; we need 180 feet of it, and so the cost of hemp rope each time that we uh, replace it is going to be 180 feet times it says up here it costs 36 cents per foot per strand okay so 36 cents which is 0.36 dollars uh, per foot strand okay and then how many strands <clears throat> we just figured out we would need five strands of that okay so I'll put in five strands Okay, and so this turns out to be 180 times 0.36 times 5. And that gives me 324. That's $324 that it costs for each one of these. And so we basically put that in here, 324, 324, All right, and what we want to do is figure out what is the present value of all of those cash flows. Now, here's an interesting thing. It is tempting to go ahead and try to use the uh, P given A formula, and you actually can, but not all by itself. And the reason why is P given A formula actually starts in year one and moves all the expenses to year zero. Since we start in year zero, that's not exactly what we have. There's a few ways around that. Um, I'm going to show you this way right here where we basically look at uh, that first cash flow of 324. Okay, so this would be my present value for this case. That first cash flow of 324 has no modification that happens to its value because it happens already in zero. And so we're just going to say that first 324, I'll just take it as a standard value and then to that I'm going to add 324 times the formula that I have of P given A which is just 1 plus the interest rate. The interest rate was 5% annually. Alright, so that would be uh, 0 0.05. Okay, now it'd be tempting to, since we have six of these, it'd be tempting to put a six up here. We don't want to do that we only want to put a five because we already dealt with that first cash flow separately. All right, we take this minus one and divide all this by the interest rate again times one plus the interest rate raised to the five. <clears throat> And now we'll punch these in and we'll figure out what the present value is for this case. So 324 plus 324 times, and we'll have this fraction here, that we lead off with 1 plus 0.05. Um, and then that is going to be raised to the fifth power, minus 1, divided by 0.05 times uh, 1 plus 0 0.05 and that would be raised to the fifth power as well. Alright. And this winds up giving me 1726.75. This is basically how much money would you need right now to set aside so that you could make sure you purchased all of these ropes that you're going to need to purchase over the next few years. Okay, what we want to do is compare that value with how much it would cost for us to do the stainless steel option. 
So let's do a quick cash flow diagram for the stainless steel option. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to slide some of this down. And that way I can see what, what our parameters are for the stainless steel option. Okay, first of all, we see it's 395 per foot per strand. So what we need to do here is probably come up with a cost uh, of stainless cable. Okay, it's going to be equal to 180 feet times 395 dollars per foot strand and then we only need three strands of this so we multiply by three strands okay and so this tells us here I'm gonna go ahead and actually store this uh, into a so that we have it later now we can go ahead and put in 180 times 395 times 3. And this gives us 2,133 dollars. That's how much it's going to cost for just one of our stainless steel uh, uh, ropes or, or uh, cables. Let's look at a free body, or not a free body diagram, a cash flow diagram for this scenario. Okay. What we have here is that we're going to need to spend twenty-one thirty-three right there at the beginning, but then over the next few years, we just keep that cable. There's no upkeep cost. We just basically keep using it. So over the next few years, until the end of the life of the of the idea of the gondola we just keep using it um, but then we actually do get some an interesting thing that happens at the end we have to sort of cash in that cable for some scrap value which basically let's figure out what that scrap value is as far as its face value when we get to the end what we get for that is just 180 feet uh, times 75 cents I believe is what we had there 75 cents per foot per strand All right okay and that gets multiplied by the number of strands and so that tells us here that that scrap value will be just 180 uh, times 0.75 times 3, which is $405. But that's just the face value. $405 is the face value there at the end of the whole project. That value is not worth as much to us in a present value sense because we don't get that money until six years from now. So it's like having money tied up for that period of time um, if we had had that money, we could have had it in a savings account and had been earning money that whole time, earning interest that whole time. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what is the present value here for this case. The present value is just going to be equal to that uh, 2133 uh, minus 405. But with that 405, we need to actually adjust its value by taking 1 plus the interest rate to the, think about the number of periods it moves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I take that to the negative 6 to change its value. And uh, its value is decreasing, which is why that value goes to the negative 6 right there. Okay, so plug these values in. 2133 minus 405 times 1 plus 0.05 times 
raised to the minus 6. And that gives me 1830.78. Okay, that's basically how much it costs me in a present value sense uh, for the stainless steel. So now the question is, uh, what's the difference, right? That's what it's asking us for. It says, what is the difference in material cost between the two options? So I basically take these two values and say the difference is going to be equal to 1800 and 30, 78 minus 1726, 75 which I believe I had that second value stored in my variable A. So I should be able to basically take this answer minus what I have in A. And that gives me a difference of 10403 dollars. Okay. Well, hopefully that's one of the choices that we have, 10403. 10403 looks like we have it right there. Uh, question, I guess that you know as would be a matter of interest for this particular question uh, would be uh, which one's better? All right. Well, whichever one minimizes your cost. And since these are basically costs that I'm evaluating in either case, it looks like the stainless steel is going to be more money. And so uh, it looks like based just on material cost, it looks like the hemp has a little bit more of an advantage. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if it has, then I would ask that you would subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate you watching.